really a revolution of just the last few years with these new gene editing technologies. Um, and what at the core, what they are, is an easy way to uh, write DNA, to manipulate basically the language of life. And this is uh, important for things like understanding what parts of our genome are responsible for different diseases, um, to improve production of uh, agriculture and crops for global food security. There are many, many um, uh, applications for easy manipulation of DNA. And genome manipulation um, is something that's just been a dream for a long time, ever since we realized that the instructions to make ourselves, our human selves, is encoded in DNA. Um, there's been a lot of potential with the idea that if we could change this, we can perhaps cure diseases that we're born with, or maybe cure diseases that we acquire later in life, like cancer. Uh, when I started working in, in this field um, of bioengineering and, and genome editing in 2011, um, we were just seeing some new tools, some new capabilities come online. Uh, but in just a few years, it's really been transformed by one particular gene editing tool that's known as CRISPR. CRISPR, which is um, originally an immune system for bacteria, um, so quite, quite a different thing, is something that we can now use to really edit DNA much more easily than any of the tools that came before it. Um, so we had ways to manipulate DNA before for the last 20, 30 years, even further back, um, depending on what, what you count as a, as a DNA manipulation tool. Um, and of course, with breeding livestock, humans actually have been kind of manipulating DNA for uh, tens of thousands of years. Um, but really the idea of very programmable, targeted tools where we can take a specific sequence of the genome and say we want to go after this and making it easy enough that any graduate student in any biology lab around the country can do it um, in, in a matter of days. That's really what, what kind of took me by surprise, something that just came about in the last few years. And I think right now we're really in an exponential phase of growth with uh, DNA editing, genome manipulation technologies. And so I think it's almost impossible to predict where we'd be even five or 10 years out from now. I think one great potential of, of genome engineering technology is that there are many diseases, many um, quite rare genetic diseases that people are born with um, that results in, in really a lower quality of life. Either they don't live as long or the life that they do live requires many, say, visits to the hospital and treatments that might be painful. And I think um, when we think about genetic disease, it really is something that's in the genome. And I think one of the really wonderful possibilities that we can ponder right now, but is not a reality yet, is to take many of these um, uh, rare genetic diseases and be able to design therapies that actually do some genome surgery. Some surgery not on an organ, perhaps, but surgery at the level of DNA within a cell and actually repair those cells and, um, you know, potentially can, can cure some of these people. That's, that's a, uh, a big word to use, but that's, um, I think that future is at least on the horizon, and that's what, you know, why I get up every morning and I want to go into the lab and build new gene editing tools and try and attack new diseases. I think it's very forward thinking of other industries outside of biology industries like um, insurance or communications industries to start thinking about how will genome editing affect the worlds that they, they live in and um, how will it transform healthcare because healthcare is something that affects all of us.